This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Please note that this podcast will have spoilers. In this chat, we will discuss the underlying themes, historical influences, inspirations, technology, ethical dilemmas, and other inspirational insights we have gleaned from each episode of the first season of Mr. Robot. We will be bringing on experts to share their insights and knowledge with us in each chat. We will also be reviewing each episode of the first season, as well as the second season when it premieres. We are awake, we are free, we are alive for F Society IRC Podcasts. So hello F Society IRC chat. This again is your moderator Rosa Scheib with a new thread in which we are going to discuss my uh, personal theory, uh, which is a bit of far out, but I think there's enough that has been revealed and shown on the show that there's a bit of a meat to this particular theory. Uh, but before we get into what I call the watership uh, conspiracy plant theory, or the watership town plant conspiracy theory, uh, we're going to have to set the table by explaining some of the terms that have been already revealed on the show, uh, some of their real-world inspirations, to kind of understand how everything kind of ties in together. First, we're going to talk about how already... Uh, I'm not going to name all 12 episodes, but the episodes that have thus far been published um, have all had encrypted designations, indicating that this particular theme for this season is about things that are hidden, I guess you can say, with this particular show. You have whatever Philip Price and White Rose are doing is hidden, the plans that F Society is, is hiding, the fact that Mr. Robot is hiding what has happened during those three days, those blackout days from Elliot, it's all about you know hiding secrets and most importantly the fact that F Society and the Dark Army, which was revealed uh, in episode five, Logic Bomb, encrypted the E Corp servers. So encryption is very key to this, as I say, to, to this season, and so that's why the designated files for in the ending of each episode, like Unmask, which is two unmask.tc, uh, which is true crypt, uh, which we talked about uh, when we reviewed that show, is key to all the episode endings versus last season in which the files had associations with uh, video format, if you will, almost like a movie. Uh, so, you know, what is going on with uh, Mr. Robot seemed very movie-esque or movie light during that, during that season with the whole kind of a caper and mysteries and revelations during that particular season. So we're going to talk about the file designations here. Uh, you have in Unmasked again was TrueCrypt, the designation is TC. Chrono Panic had KSD, which keeps safe encrypt. Int1 had ASIC, which is an Android secure engagement file. And the latest episode, Logic Bomb, which is designation HC, is the VRCrypt encryption app, which is very similar to TrueCrypt. And you can say almost a a replacement for that program when it comes to encrypting and encoding files. Now, there has been a number of slight revelations in the journal that Elliot has done in which he is writing various codes or looks like code is being written. There may be some type of uh, a monomic, mem- I can't say it, but a memory trick where you, you put a string of words together a monomic, I, again, I can't pronounce that word, but a method upon which you can remember that might have an explanation why his journal is named Red Barrel. But there's all these various hints um, concerning that that might reveal the encryption key that you utilize to unlock those eCorp servers. Because without that key, you can't, you can't garner the information. And I'm not sure at this point in time if it's been revealed or whether or not the Dark Army has a key and Elliot has a key. Uh, do they have the keys to their own encryption? Because it's, it's revealed in Logic Bomb, which I didn't believe was the case, but it appears that Dark Army went along with the encrypting of the E Corp service as well. You know, who has the keys? Could Elliot hold the keys for, for both servers, the ones in China and the ones in, in E Corp? Or is there a half and half situation? Because as Elliot stated, you know, hackers don't trust people. There's there's not really much trust among that type of uh, individual. But as we're 
building the case here uh, for this theory, we need to cover some of the terms that have been utilized and the components, I think, that make for the Watership Town plant conspiracy something that may be happening on the show. So you have Philip Price and White Rose. They are together. Uh, we saw that in last season, and there's been a, a, a bigger buildup of that relationship this season, where obviously they're, they are in communi- in communication with one another. They have a strong familiar with one another, as it was revealed in In It One. Uh, but most importantly, what we're, we're seeing is they have some sort of plan together. We don't know if that has anything to, to do with the Dark Army and the F Society plan, if there's a tie in there because the linkage is white with white rose, if they're doing a manipulation on their part or, or taking advantage of an opportunity, a lot of it is very hazy, very ambiguous. We, we really don't know what's going on here. What we do know is that White Rose, uh, in her civilian role, she is the head of cybersecurity, a, a security minister within the Chinese government. So she's part of the 1%. She's part of the echelon, the, the elite. This is something that's been very confirmed. Uh, that, and we also know that there's business ties, and that business ties has to do with a plant. Now, the only plant that has ever been really truly mentioned on this show is the Water Ship Town plant. That is the plant that Elliot's father and Angela's mother worked at. That is the plant that there was a leakage that ended up causing... Uh, Elliot's father, Edward Anderson, to have cancer, to have leukemia. And um, it's safe to assume the same thing happened to Angela's mom as a result of their deaths, as a result of cancer. Though there has been strong hints of suspicion that maybe possibly Elliot's father didn't actually die from leukemia. But what we do know is that both of these individuals are dead and they have ties to that particular plant. Now, there's been a series of lawsuits that have been going on concerning that where You know, survivors of, you know, perhaps survivors who were worked at the plant had, you know, beat the cancer and are trying to get some kind of money out of it because, you know, they were poisoned. The the relatives and the families, in this case, Angela, um, as a a survivor, as a daughter of a mother who died from the watership plant, are suing E Corp to get some kind of compensation. And in these lawsuits, as it has been revealed in in it, one is that the, the watership township plant, E-Corp does not want a third party to check out the safety of that plant, which means either that plant is still operational or for some reason they still, they just don't want anyone bothering that particular plant for whatever reason. Now we know that uh, Philip Price and White Rose spoke of the plant and how they, they wanted to keep, keep it going. Uh, we don't know what, for, what purpose or if that is the same plant. It could be a different plant, but I'm thinking it is the same plant. And that there's something about the Watership Town plant in and of itself that is very key and essential and important to E-Corp. Because with everything that is going on, with the, the databases being encrypted, with the, basically the global collapse happening throughout the world, if you will, um, in particular the American economy tanking, for them to be so concerned about a plant that at this point in time in the series, considering that Elliot's father died in 1995, some of this may have occurred like in the 91, 89 type of a range. It's almost been 20 plus years that this plant has been in operation, um, that this, this incident has happened. Uh, that plant could possibly have been um, in operation much longer than that. For them to be concerned about that type of a plant of that type of age, um, it's just telling, it's indicative, if you will, that there's some sort of extra value to it beyond just this whole lawsuit. Because E-Corp could easily just pay everybody off and just kind of get rid of everybody. They can not actually accept blame, if you will. Uh, we see this all the time with various lawsuits. But they just you know, pay some form of restitution, somehow kind of settle everything and let this issue die out. But, they, but that has not actually happened. The other thing is the, the e-coin. Uh, Phil Price believes the solution out of this current economic dilemma, if you will, the, this thing that I think that they're trying to take advantage of to position e-corp at a greater claim, if you were, will, to the, the global economy, to, to the economic situation, 
is these ecoins. Now, ecoin seems to be the equivalent, if you will, to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin actually exists in the world. So ecoin is more like this corporate coin. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into the, um, the nature of Bitcoin in itself, which is um, part of the show and it's part of the Ray storyline about him and Silk Road. Uh, what exactly a Bitcoin is, if you don't are unfamiliar with it, but in essence, to kind of, kind of break it down, uh, in order to have a corporate coin, if you will, one in which a corporation like E Corp controls, they're going to need to have a significant amount of computing power, and I think that is what is in the Watership Town. I think they have. Uh, they have built something there, um, and what I think they have built is a quantum computer, and we'll get into the nature of that and why it's important when it comes to cryptography, but most importantly was when it comes to uh, eCoin. That is in that watership plant, and it's not yet activated because it's very difficult to not only build a quantum computer, the hardware in itself, but the software and combining the two together. It's just recently, within the last couple of years, that what we would consider to be a true quantum computer may or may not have come out. Um, I'm going to read about the motherboard article that just came out um, August 8th, but Google has stated that they have a quantum computer. Uh, there's a couple places that say they have a quantum computer, and then there's quantum computers that people are calling quantum computers, but they're not, and I'll explain what that is, they're called D-Wave computers. And in order for E Corp to have that that dominance in the world, that domination in the world economically. But most importantly, it seems to also have some sense of absolute complete control of the economy, but the governments, if you will, around the world, they would need something like a quantum computer to do that. And uh, when I break down the Watership Town conspiracy, the various parts, if you will, as I lay out the table, uh, I'll explain how that is going to go about. But in essence, what this conspiracy is about is Basically, E Corp, along with somehow White Rose, is attached to it. And I'm not sure if she's attached to it as a member of the Dark Army or as a member of the Chinese government, because then we get into the whole political thing there. What you have is a company that is seeking to, in essence, be the slow provider of the world economy. And what I mean by that is I mean is the commodities, the bonds, the property the cash, if you will, the wealth creation of the world is going to come through them and not through governments. I mean, the, if you look at your any bill that you have currently in your hand, it's the, through the full faith and credit of the United States government that that piece of paper is backed. And that's what a majority of countries are like that, is backed by the, the stance and the power of that particular government. Um, Majority of governments now are no longer backed by gold, which used to be the standard of wealth creation uh, throughout history, was was basically gold, uh, controlling gold, silver, property, if you will, and armies. I mean, which is still something that goes on today. But with the advantation of Bitcoin and the concept of e-cash, which has been around for a very long time, but actually coming into existence, the ability to take that ba- that power, that creation of wealth out of the hands of the government, uh, which is what Bitcoin does, and placing it um, in the hands of a corporation, which is what uh, E-Corp is do- uh, trying to do, uh, is going to be a really significant game changer. And I think it's the thing that Elliot spoke about how you can't allow, as part of the second phase, you can't allow E-Corp to bounce back. And I'm un- uncertain whether or not Elliot is aware of what's going on in the Watership Town plant beyond the fact that it poisoned his father and resulted in his death. Or if he is familiar with all the various connections and inroads that are going on. But it would be interesting to see that that what F Society has done with the the crypting of the servers and the crash that it is bringing this plan that's actually been in development for some long, some I think for a very long time on the part of E Corp is something that they want to debut, uh, bringing it into existence earlier. So to kind of just summarize real quick, because I know I kind of rambled along here, is that the Watership Town conspiracy 
is the keeping of the particular plant in and of itself hidden from everybody. Whatever is inside that plant, whatever it is that they're building, E Corp doesn't want it to be known. I think it's a quantum computer, and I think it's it is what uh, Philip Price wants to do is in backing the E coin, and that the white rose is supporting this to some extent, not completely, because I think she doesn't completely believe into the in the plan in of itself on that end, but on the part of Philip Price and White Rose, uh, utilizing what is going on right now to kind of take control of the army. I'm not the army, but taking control of the economy, the global economy. I think that's what is at play here. So we're going to break down the various parts. I'm going to explain what eCash is, which is what Bitcoin is, which is the real world thing that exists right now, which is being utilized by, uh, if, if we see in the back of uh, the scenes in the, the background of all the, the various episodes, you see the little, uh, the Bitcoin truck. You see, you've heard it mentioned and part of Ray's website that uh, Bitcoin is used on his site. I'm going to explain about a little bit about quantum computing, what it is, uh, what the machines are, the kind of hints about the fact that um, the type of cancer that Elliot's father has um, had and most likely Angela's mother had uh, is a bit of a hint of the type of development or what type of a plant it is because there is some real world things that have happened, the toxic nature of creating computer components. So let's talk about the Water Township plant. Uh, this is a plant upon which Elliot's father, uh, Edward um, Anderson, and Angela's mother, whose name we don't know, uh, worked at, and there was a leak, and a result of the leak, a number of the workers there, and it seems like it's the population around that plant uh, had cancer, developed cancer because of this leak. There was a cover-up uh, orchestrated, or at least Terry Colby and the two men that uh, Angela went to dinner with uh, participated in the meeting to keep that cover-up going, to cover it up, and basically end up firing a number of the workers, no doubt. These workers ended up dying from cancer. No doubt uh, other people have died from cancer and such of uh, such the nature, and the various lawsuits have been going on. Uh, something that is not known or is not widely publicized a lot is the fact that a lot of these the components for electronics, uh, the the means upon which to make chips and things of that nature, it's very toxic. There's another there's a side component to that. There's it wasn't until I would say within the last twenty years that there, there's been enough uh, studies when it comes to how manufacturing is done in the computer industry that has resulted in a, a lot of cancer happening to a number of the workers. Um, this is from a a Gizmodo article, and I'm pretty sure some of this may have been the inspiration for the the toxic leak, or if you will, the inspiration for like the lawsuits and things of that nature of what what goes on there uh, for the show. But this article written by Kelsey Campbell Doglin uh, today, Silicon Valley, and it's called uh, "A Secret History of Silicon Valley and the Toxic Toxic Remnants of the First Computers." Today, Silicon Valley is a dreamy off escape, a place where ideas and networks and currency. But in the 60s and 70s, a Silicon Valley proper manufactured hardware, and this industry boom created one of the most polluted places in America. If you live in Silicon Valley, there's probably t- not news to you, but maybe you even attended this month EPA led community meeting about the latest redemation news. Uh, journalists have written about the side effects of Silicon Valley, too. Uh, in 2001, uh, writing in Salon, Jim Fisher investigated the toxic slo- soil and high rates of cancers among workers at IBM. Uh, this article, again, comes from uh, Giz- uh, Gizmo, uh, November 20th of 2015. So IBM, a number of IBM workers uh, sued IBM because of their cancer rates. Uh, a lot of the different types of job positions uh, resulted in them receiving, you know, this exposure. Uh, there's the chip washers. Uh, this week, a semiconductor ma- maker based in Phoenix brought another semiconductor maker called Fairchild for a few billion dollars. And not, not being familiar, name like Apple, but Fairchild was among the several other small startups 
pioneer in the technology and powers all of our electronics all the way back to the 50s. The silicone manufacturer technology developed at these companies turned it quite, okay, so I'm going to skip around here and get into the meat of here. So there's a method to, to do this. Um, basically, it has to do with the super pure silicon created by pulling a seed crystal through a vat of molten silicon until it formed a thick multi-layered ingot, like the one seen in the Fairchild promotional video, which I'll have a link to this article, and the one above of the Raython lab below. The sausage-shaped ingots were then shaped into thin wafers and polished using a number of chemicals. After came the process of printing transitions into chips, which required degreasers and solvents, including the sweet smell of tri trichloric ethanol, TEC, which was only classified as a carcinogen by the EPA in 2005 and later would be found in the groundwater around Silicon Valley after leaking from a dozen of different manufacturing sites. TCE, which was the first made in the U.S. in the 1920s, has been used at various points of history as an engine part degreaser and an alternative to chloroform. Now, chloroform is known to be a toxin and can cause all sorts of series of health issues is why it was stopped being utilized in manufacturing. But this, at the time, a lot of these factories were being um, built and done. And this technique to make this, the, the chips, the silicone chips, if you will, that is essential for electronics, a lot of it wasn't known. Um, there's been issues of whether or not how much IBM, for example, knew about the toxic side effects of their method of manufacturing. But what has happened is that a lot of these places, you know, is leaked into the, the groundwater. There's a high race of cancer surrounding a lot of these uh, near or not far from these particular manufacturing sites. For example, um, a chip company called CTS, which is still from this article, printed, uh, Printex Incorporated, are being mitigated. Uh, in a lawsuit in 2013, 1,000 Google workers in an office building near the site were exposed to excessive levels of the TCE in the air over, over a period of two months. A super site that where Apple is building its new campus is a 15-acre site where the company's manufactured com uh, semiconductors in the 1980s was by uh, Instellar Incorporated as CMOS co components. There's 23 soil vapor extraction wells have been built along with a carbon absorption treatment facility. The groundwater is being extracted, treated by air stripping and discharged in the Calabas Creek. In less than 30 years, this patch of soil has gone from farmland to the site of technology revolution to a massive cluster of superfunded cleanup sites. So there's a lot of these cleanup sites that are happening around these areas because of the toxicity. It, is really the toxicity of developing a lot of these computers. And it makes me think because of... Now, because of the nature of creating these components that are necessary for computers and the toxic side effects and the fact that uh, E Corp on the show was attempting, if you will, um, to hide all that and that because so much of Mr. Robot is inspired by the real world, and we know that these very, as I explained, that a number of these different companies, um, you know, have shown, you know, the toxic nature, uh, cancer rates are happening and surrounding these, where these plants are, that it has, to, there has to be more than just not admitting to the courts or to the public that, for example, for example, the that they're responsible for the cancer to their to their workers and paying for those health costs or any kind of compensation for the dead uh, to the to the some remaining surviving family members. There has to be something else going on there, and in particular, I was wondering what exactly could what could that plant be building? What is it that they're building that's different from all the other plants that they have that they want to keep this place a place that at one point in time was leaking toxic gases, if you will, to its, um, to its workers, and as a result of which they have, um, you know, died of cancer. Given the nature of the type of cancer that these workers have experienced and the type of leakage, it makes me think that, you know, not only is it a, a chip manufacturing plant, but this might be a plant that might be, in fact, creating either the first series or eventually the actual series of quantum chips that are going to be utilized for a quantum computer. In particular, there's a, a couple forms. Um, one is a D-Wave computer that 
some think is a quantum computer, and then there's other studies that are not um, making it a quantum computer. And, we'll, and I'll explain what a quantum computer is. But basically what it is, is it's a box that houses a computer chip that is kept at uh, absolute zero degrees. Um, a quantum computer needs to be at absolute zero degrees or it won't work at all. It won't, it won't function. It has to be maintained at that amount or it, it ceases to function. And so it makes me think that something like that must have been built within the, uh, the plant in order for them to quanta, kind of want to keep it secret. Because while a number of different um, quantum projects are out there, including Google and MIT and stuff like that, a lot of them are in conjunction with various segments or entities within governments. And it's not necessarily a pure, on its own, completely corporate um, own computing project. It is a, some form of partnership with some government entity, which um, could be problematic if you're going to implement the type of plans that I'm going to talk about as part of this conspiracy. But that makes me think, given um, what is understood about, uh, for example, the D-Wave computer, the type of computer chip is a, um, I'm getting this from Wicca, um, the first produced D-Wave processor was a programmable superconducting integrated circuit with up to 120 pairwise coupled superconducting superconducting flux qubits. Uh, the 120 qubit processor was suspended by a superseded by a 512 qubit processor in 2013, and the processor is designed to implement a special purpose quantum leaning as opposed to being operated as a universal gate model com quantum computer. So that type of a chip that could have been built within um, within that plant would have been something that not only would have been revolutionary, but it might have been something that not only completely priority, but in the end, something that maybe Evil Corp did not want to get out there because they did not want to use the quantum ch chip, if you will, or any aspect of the quantum programming and the quantum computer conjunction with any kind of government entity. And the reason why... Um, I think it is a quantum computer, personally, is because Bitcoin already exists. And when we explain what eCoin is and the nature of eCash and, and Bitcoin, by creating um, a product similar to Bitcoin, if you will, in people's mindset, is not enough for eCorp to get out of the hole that it's in. I mean, Philip Price, that is his hat trick, if you will, that is his ace in up his sleeve that somehow is going to save E-Corp, but also bring um, the global economy, fix the global economy, if you will, that E-Corp is going to be the great savior of this uh, economic collapse. In order for that hat trick to work, it can't be like Bitcoin where it's decentralized and peer-to-peer. -peer. It has to be um, centralized like and under the control of E-Corp. But it has to be stronger, it has to be power, more powerful, and it has to be more versatile, if you will. And not only that, because eCorp has a global infrastructure, it has to be a, a type of system that not only will it be successfully incorporated within eCorp infrastructure, but worldwide as well. And most importantly, it has to be secure, it has to be safe. And the only way to do that right now, I think, to utilize a type of system that's similar to Bitcoin, this e-coin, this uh, wealth generator, if you will, uh, e this e-cash uh, system, this generator of wealth that takes the power of wealth generation out of the hands of governments. But now, instead of with Bitcoin, where it's the hands of the individuals, but in the hands of a corporation, you're going to have to have a quantum computer to back that up. You're going to have to have a cartography system that is so powerful and is incapable of being broken by anybody currently out there it cannot be hacked. It can't be uh, jury rigged or some way. It can't be deal uh, have a DOS attack or anything like that. You're gonna have to have a quantum computer, and I'm thinking that is what is being built within that particular plant that is the home place of Angela and Elliot. It has to be that Watertown 
plant has to be something special. It has to be generating or creating something special. And the only thing I can think of at this point in time that's significant in the computing world that is special is a quantum computer and ties into the concept of equine. So before we talk about equine, and I've, I dropped it about, about a little bit, we have to explain what quantum computers are just a tiny bit. I'm not going to get too technical on the explanation, but I'm just going to kind of get into the basics of it and most importantly how it might tie into the water township in the sense that um, the leakage, if you will, the specialness of that particular plant. So what is a quantum computer? I am going to go to Reddit because I think this is probably the, the best explanation of it. And it comes from an ELL5 quantum computing. Explain it like I'm five from Reddit. How do they theoretically work? Why are they supposed to be faster? What are the consequences of them in terms of privacy? And why aren't they commonplace yet? So this uh, explanation, and it's from a year ago, comes from uh, Pyre Spirit. There are some good explanations of what they, of what they are here, but none yet on why they're faster. The reason for this is something called the quantum random walk. There's a method of getting from one place to another in the classical world called the random walk. There are a series of steps which can be taken, but the path is not determined. So a way you get there is by exploring each path one at a time and try to find the shortest path. In the classical world, it's just the world that we live in and all the current computers, electronics, devices that we currently have, this takes a lot of time as you have to follow one path to its end then follow a different path to its end over and over and over in order to try and find the shortest path. In a quantum world, however, you can follow every path simultaneously. This direct, dra dramatically shortens the time necessary to find the shortest path. And then here's a, another little good explanation about quantum computers. A computer works with zeros and ones. If you have enough zeros and enough ones, you can remember anything. But the thing is, each one can only be a zero or a one and never both. You're limited in this regard because this means that no matter how many zeros and ones you have, you can only make one calculation at a time. You can make it really fast, but you can only make one calculation at any given point in time. However, some particles can be more than one state in the same time. If you can make a computer where each bit could do this, you could have one bit be both a zero and a one at the same time. Sound of mind exploring. Let's call these qubits. Since each one can be both at the same time, you can make many, many calculations once, and thus you can calculate something in less time, and you have a faster computer. So because you can do these calculations all at the same time, if you're trying to figure out a problem, if you're trying to, for example, break in an encryption code, say, I don't know, the encryption that is on the servers for E-Corp, e both in the States and in China, with a quantum computer, you can thus, in essence, figure out the keys in a very rapid fashion and break them, basically, because uh, you because of the quantum computer can simultaneously f go through all the different probable scenarios until they can find the right key and solve the problem. That's why all the current uh, security measures that we currently have in our current state of the world, if a quantum computer were to become fully functional, where to come online, those security parameters will be broken rather fast and rather quickly. For example, uh, credit card transactions, bank transactions are encrypted. That information can now, with a quantum computer, should it come active, be broken and read. Currently at the state of time, you, you're not capable of reading that information unless you already have the key unless you do a lot of other things to hack and find that information. The actual breaking down the, the messages, if you will, is unknowable. You can't do it really, in a sense. You have to do a lot of circum circumstances stuff. But if you're able to solve the mathematical problem, solve the problem that allows you to have the key and thus access to that information, then you can see it. With a quantum computer, because they can go through all the various scenarios all at once at the same time, it's, it will break that code. There will, there will not be a math problem. There will not be a, a cryptographic program out there in existence that could resist a quantum computer. 
you literally will have to create an entire new system of cryptography that is based on the principles of simultaneous calculations that would prevent a quantum computer from from breaking it or figuring it out. So why this is important is because if you're E Corp and you're trying to dominate the economic world, if you have a quantum computer and you're a financial institution, which is being demonstrated what E Corp essentially is, is a financial marketplace, is a bank, is a credit card, is loans, it does all those things. And you literally want to be free of governments, free of control by anybody. If you somehow were able to control a quantum computer, develop the most fast, the fastest computer in the known world, and thus break any type of cryptography, any type of security system in place by done by either not only yourself as a company, but by any corporation out there, you could in essence control the world. Because you now currently have a computer that renders everybody else obsolete. But that in of itself is not enough. Even if you've taken a computer and rendered something in itself obsolete, who says that any government or any body or any entity is going to allow you to place that computer online or allow you to activate it or do anything with it? The only way that you perhaps could, in theory, get around that without having any interference is as if the government in itself controls that quantum computer because nobody wants to live in a world in which such a type of system were put in place then the game is over in essence but if you're evil corp and you want to control the economy you somehow are able to stealthily develop this and put this in place and go through all the software parameters, do all the ins and outs, and create a very sophisticated quantum computer that it's leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else, then not only do you have the most powerful computer in the world, but you can combine that with the concept of e-cash and thus have the most powerful economic market in the world. So in order for me to explain what e-coin is, um, I first have to explain what Bitcoin is, which is something that's been part of the show from the very beginning. It was mentioned in passing in season one. Um, it was in the f- first part of second season to premiere, uh, where you saw the Bitcoin truck. It's what Ray is using as a form of payment on his dark mar- market website, which is very similar to what was done in the real world with the Silk Road uh, website. Uh, in fact, they even utilize the same, you know, pseudonym, which is uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts. So, um, this definition comes from our Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is the currency of the internet, a distributed, worldwide, decentralized digital money. Unlike traditional currencies such as dollars, Bitcoins are issued and managed without any central authority whatsoever. There's no government, company, or bank in charge of Bitcoin. As such, it's more resistant to wild inflation and corrupt banks with Bitcoin, you can be your own bank. So let's break this down a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin is the currency of the internet. This is one of the big key things when it comes to payment forms on the internet, even with PayPal, um, Vimo, uh, credit cards, debit cards, any of those type of transactions that occur on the internet. It's not secure enough. It, it truly isn't. Um, the reason why a lot of goods and services are probably as expensive, as expensive as they are, even though if they are cheaper on the internet than they are in the store, is because of fraud. Because people are able to duplicate the credit card and debit card uh, information so easily. There's been so many hacks. Uh, it's so easy and possible for that to happen that you know things have to be. There's so many fees associated with that banking process that things become. Um, the goods and services have that built-in price into it. Um, there's also a thing about chargebacks. Chargebacks are when someone says they didn't purchase something or they want a refund. And so a vendor can lose out on that, especially considering that credit cards are designed to protect the individual more so than the vendor. If an individual says that uh, they didn't get the item, then the credit card company is going to give that refund back to the individual even if the merchant is capable of proving that, yes, they did deliver the goods and services, it's just not how the credit card companies work 
uh, with debit and even with debit and banking. Uh, being decentralized means that nobody, you know, again, no centralized authority allows it, can control it. Um, you know, the dollar is backed by the full faith credit of the United States, and its, its monetary policies are pretty much set by the Fed, and that is a central authority, and there's no such institutions in place with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, there's only 21 million coins that will ever exist, period. Uh, so you don't have to worry about quantum easing or somebody uh, going in the back and just turning on the printer just because they want to create uh, more wealth or even debase the dollar to perceive that it has a greater value because things, uh, because some other country might be able to purchase your goods um, easier because, you know, the dollar is cheaper or something to that nature. Um, that's not going to happen. You also don't have banks having such a significant influence on Bitcoin like we saw with Philip Price basically telling the Fed to get the votes necessary for him to get the bailout um, for Evil Corp. You're not going to have that type of input in this particular type of monetary system. And then I'm going to give you another definition of Bitcoin because it's pretty important to understand and know what it is. So here's another definition and basically in essence this is using Bitcoin just kind of summarizes the concept of digital money online and what cryptocurrency is and the basic difference between a Bitcoin and an e-coin and, and by giving this easier definition I will be able to explain how ecoin is going to be different so this comes from we use coins and it defines bitcoin like this it's easy person to person you send bitcoin from your computer tablet smartphone or other devices to anyone anywhere in the world day and night so there is no monetary um currently there's no monetary restrictions for example if i wanted to send ten thousand dollars to anyone in the states, you know, from from myself to my mom because she she needs to purchase a, a car or something like that, it would cause a red flag in, into the to the system because ten, anything that's greater to, at ten thousand dollars or greater triggers um, FinCEN, which is a a financial arm of the U.S. government, and they they're going to think about mon you know money laundering or something like that. Uh, my bank. Is may not let me do it because I may have not done it before. They might question it. They, in fact, might put a delay on it, um, even though she might need it right then and there. It might take two to three days. And, so, and that's just for my bank to transmit it to her bank. And then her bank might say, you know, um, this is, might be suspicious. And she might not get it from five to seven days from the initial transmission. With Bitcoin, that's not the case. There's nothing blocking it. If I wanted to send $10,000 in value of Bitcoin to my mother, it's done like that in a snap, like an email. Um, it would be there within either from six to, you know, six seconds to six minutes, depending on what type of wallet I'm using. The most, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Um, it's secure, strong cryptography. Bitcoin verifies transaction, transactions with the same state-of-the-art encryption that is used by banking, military, and government applications. It's open and fully decentralized. Bitcoin is open source. Nobody owns it. The most popular client is maintained by a community of open source developers. Again, there's no government entity. There's no Fed. There's no banking system like uh, E-Corp that might have um, a say on monetary policy or how many Bitcoins come into existence or what the fees are or how the miners operate. I mean, there's a lot of components to the Bitcoin to make it happen. Um, that is not the case. And it's fair. Um, minimal fees. Using the Bitcoin network is free, except for a voluntary fee you can use to speed up transaction processes. And that is something that you don't have to pay. So, for example, if I want to send uh, my mother that $10,000 in Bitcoin, I can do it without the fee, and it might take um, an hour for it to transmit. Because, you know, miners like to get paid. They're the ones responsible for maintaining the network. But if I choose to do a fee, say the fees might be, you know, 60 cents. 
by adding 60 cents to the transaction, my $10,000 will get there within the 6 to 10 minute time frame. And so that's um, we use coins definition. How eCoin is going to be different is it's still going to have the same components of person to person, the method of transmission. Um, I, I think if you've ever been on Twitter or through Facebook, you might have seen the eMessenger app, which is an eCoin or uh, Evil Corp messaging app through Twitter. Um, if you're familiar with Telegram or Vimo or Facebook Messenger, or I think WhatsApp, these were all messengers. You can transmit money through those messaging apps. You can do it through, um, I think Facebook uses PayPal. Um, Telegram and WhatsApp allows you to use Bitcoin if you choose to. But you can link your credit card or debit card to these web, these messaging apps and you can send um, money to your friends or family um, for for whatever reason through the messaging app and it's very easy uh, for people to do. Maybe you need to pay someone for drinks or pizza or they got stranded on the side of the road or your kid needs um, gas money. That is something that can be done and they can then in turn um, basically use their messaging app to much like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay or those type of pay systems just swipe their phone over the little counter device and boom, the, the money's sent. You can pretty much do this with Bitcoin as well at any retail that accepts Bitcoin. Same process too, but less fees and I would think uh, more security and higher value. Now where it differs here is in the next two, two sit parts here. Secure strong cryptography is going to have the same secure strong cryptography, but it's going to be done with a quantum computer. And because it's a quantum computer or quantum um, computations, not only is it going to be very secure because no one's going to be able to crack it, but it's going to be transmitted in such a faster and higher processing rate that it's going to be very instantaneous. The moment I hit enter, if I were to transmit you know, that $10,000 using the eCoin system, my mother will have it and it will have the value. It would be like a one second, probably even less than a second for that value of money to be transmitted. And that would be the distinctual difference between, you know, Bitcoin and eCoin and why it would need to be better than Bitcoin is that instantaneous transaction. The other part is that it will not be decentralized. It will be completely controlled by e, the evil corp corporation. It will utilize the, the quantum computer that they control. It will utilize this already inf existing infrastructure, much like a country, if you will, where people will probably be able to take their e-coins and purchase all their goods and services with the use of e-coins. I bet even initially there might be even a discount. If you pay for with e-coin, you get like a 10% discount using e-coins versus using dollars. Not only that, but because we know that there's a $50 allowance, there won't be the, that type of economic restriction on an e-coin. You can spend more than $50 on with the use of e-coin. And because of that, people are going to transmit their wealth into e-coin, uh, much like they are probably most likely doing so with Bitcoin to get around that uh, $50 allowance. And now I'm just going to kind of break down some of the components that make up to um, make up Bitcoin, that which uh, e-coin would have, but be a little bit different. Um, the blockchain is the public ledger that records the Bitcoin transactions. I'm getting this definition from Wikipedia. It's a component of Bitcoin. A novel solution accomplishes that without any trusted central authority, maintenance of the blockchain is performed by a network of communication nodes running Bitcoin software. In this case, with eCoin, it will be the quantum computers that eCoin uh, or Evil Corp uh, controls. They would also control the network. Uh, the, transaction, the transactions of form... Payer X and Y Bitcoins to pay, pay Z are broadcast to the network using readable available software application. The network nodes can validate transactions and add them to their copy of the ledger. And then they broadcast these ledgers additions to other nodes. The blockchain is a distributed database to achieve an independent verification of the chain of ownership of any and every Bitcoin amount. Each network node stores its own copy of the blockchain. Approximately six times per hour, a new group of accepted transactions of block is created. 
added to the blockchain and quickly published all notes. This allows Bitcoin software to determine when a particular Bitcoin amount has been spent, which is necessary in order to prevent double spinning in an environment without central oversight. Whereas the conventional ledger reg records the transfers of actual bills or promissory notes that exist apart from it, the blockchain is the only place that Bitcoin can be said to exist in the form of unspent outputs of transactions. So I would imagine that the e-coin would operate in a similar fashion, but that public portion, that public transaction, wouldn't be known by the users. It would only be known by eCorp. They would know how much money is being sent and transmitted through the network because they are the ones that control the miners and control the nodes and control the ledger. The only thing that the person controls with the e-coin is probably the amount that is on their wallet, the units, if you will, how much they have and how much they're willing to purchase or um, purchase or utilize. Um, there will no doubt be some kind of private or public key. Um, I think it would be smart on the evil corpse part to allow for the use of the private key, but I would imagine what they would do is much in the same way that Coinbase controls um, the private keys of people's Bitcoins. Is a, Coinbase is a wallet as well as an exchange. So basically, you would use the eMessenger app. It would have your eCoins on it um, because you sign into the eMessenger e app and you have access to the app. You have access to Coin, much like your your physical wallet. But in order for it for you to have, you wouldn't have absolute control of it. Because the actual private keys, the the ownership of it would still be in control of E Corp. They would have um, complete access to it. So, for example, think of um, a private and public key as this: a public key would be like your mailing address, and the only way to access the information associated with the mailing address is you have to have the physical key. In my case, I would have my house key that would open the door or open my mailbox and I can access the information there. Well, what eCorp will do is they will bypass that. They would own the mail key and they will allow me to have the public address. But what they will do is they will maybe like cut a hole that only I will be able to access at any time. But they still have the key that will demonstrate ownership. So at any point in time, if they wanted to, they could just take um, that information out of my public address at any given moment. I hope that makes sense. Um, in mining, again, the mining would be done by um, the quantum computers that uh, Evil Corp owns. And because of that, I would imagine that the supply, while Bitcoin is at 21 um million coins will ever come to existence and no other new coin will ever be created ever again. I would imagine eCoin, when it initially comes out into existence, there may be a set amount, but it's not going to be 21 million. I would imagine that Philip Price, if he wants to somehow supplant the dollar, he would have to create some eCoins that would still have the same kind of principles that all digital cash has, but there's a set amount and there's no um, inflation. Um, inflation. Well, there's some coins that don't have that, but in the case of the comparison with Bitcoin, if there's a set amount, so there's no inflation. I would imagine he would do something like, I don't know, oh, to keep the math simple, like 500 billion e-coins, or maybe 1 trillion e-coins will come to existence, and that's the only amount of e-coins that there ever will be. These quantum computers control the network. They're the ones who compete the competitions for the e-coins. They verify the transactions. They do everything that you would accept, expect from a digital cash. But there's only one trillion in existence. And its value would come from the full faith credit of not only the evil corp, but also the, the math principle. So when I mean my full faith credit, I mean that the e-coins would probably be able to spend in e, any e-coin already existing infrastructure. So if there's a grocery store that uh, Evil Corp owns, you'll be able to purchase your goods and services with those e-coins. And I would bet initially when it comes out, because of the economic crisis that's going on, or the supposed crisis going on on Mr. Robot, you could probably spend um, more 
of your money, you would get a discount if you will by using eCoin. Not only that, but you would get around a fifty dollar allowance because you're able to spend more um, money because of the value of eCoin. So, for example, if you were to transfer your dollars that you possess, say you have a hundred dollars, now you have a hundred dollars that you can spend at one time because you don't have that cash restrictions, but you're spending you know eCoins instead of dollars, and because uh, the math um, e-coins will never have like a zero or non-existing value but it might be initially when it comes out it might be valued less than a, than the dollar so for example you know how the dollar is broken down into a penny as the lowest monetary value say for example one e-coin is worth um, one hundredth of a penny so you have to have a hundred e-coins to get a penny in order to get you know ten cents you would have to have a thousand e-coins and so far and so forth and so initially when the e-coins come out they will have you know less value than the dollar but because you're getting a discount at spending at e you know evil court places and because of the math and because you're able to transfer the dollar wealth into e-coin by exchanging it out and able to get around the fifty dollar allowance i imagine that that value as um you know, trading markets forms that e coin, one single e coin would rise in value. Like currently, right now, Bitcoin is worth five hundred sixty dollars, but because of where you can purchase your stuff versus um, with Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin you can purchase it in a lot of places, but not everywhere in existence. But with e coin, because of its large, I would imagine, global thumbprint, and you can purchase it everywhere. And you can get around that fifty dollar allowance; it would increase in value. And not only that, but I think because of all its, um, as it observed with Romero's um, mother, all its connection with all the different debit and credit card systems and the payment um, processing units, it would have a much larger global presence and infrastructure than necessary just um, spending it at uh, Evil Corp's only, you know, stores or places. You probably might be able to spin it at McDonald's because it has a, a, a Evil Corp uh, money transmitting device. So just like there's an Apple Pay and a Samsung Pay, you now can have an, the eCoin Pay. And this would position Evil Corp not only out of the current economic rut that it is in as a corporation, but it would have a significant control of the monetary system because it just now created its own monetary supply without a government, without any, um, you know, wars or armies or anything like that, without any government oversight. And it will be not something that anything the government would stop doing because it's uh, uplifting the economy. People are spending money. Um, people are paying their bills. They're not rioting in the streets. And it would significantly shift shift the status of evil corp not only as a corporation but its wealth and standing in the world it would end up within a very short time i would say controlling the the wealth of the world in itself because of the crisis that was created by uh, the encryption of the database In conclusion, the basic principles of the theory, or I should say, what the theory is, is that Philip Price or e and Evil Corp are maintaining and keeping the plant going for the sole purpose of building the quantum chips, the necessary for the quantum computer, so that they can eventually launch an e-coin, a cryptocurrency virtual coin, that will allow them to have economic dominance in the world. This is something that is, appears to be done in conjunction with White Rose, who is not only a head of the security of cybersecurity in China or some kind of security minister, minister but also the head of Dark Army. And uh, they either manipulate the S-Society plan or they're taking full advantage of it to 
bring Evil Corp to be the not only the saver of the global collapse, but eventually the sole economic provider of everything. Your bonds, your treasury, your property, uh, your monetary policy, your currency will come through a corporation instead of a, a government. So that's the end of this thread. Uh, thank you for listening and logging off for now. Thank you for joining us on this chat. You can find us on all podcast outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and any podcast catcher. You can reach us on Twitter at FSocietyIRC, our website at FSocietyIRC.xyz. You can email us at FSocietyIRC at ProtonMail.com. Our music attributes are under the Creative Commons license number three. The intro music is by Monk. The song is called The Planet Shakers, the Paragraph Remix. Our outro music is by Trevet Halbeka, and the song is Elf Kappa, as well as Kwana, and the song is Demons. You can support the show either via the QR code in the show notes by contributing with a Bitcoin, or through PayPal, and there's a link in the show notes where you can PayPal me under Herosia Shai. If you're very into uh, cryptocurrency, you can also tip me through a uh, chain chip at Herosia, or at one name at Herosia. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to hearing from you. Logging off. This has been a Herosia Shad Space Odyssey Network production.